Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 23 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Uh, where today, I'd like to set up a little kelp farm, and I'd like to put it away off to the side where it's not going to be in the way of anything. So just a nice little place to call Kelpy Farmy, and it'll be great. Uh, I have some really cool ideas on how to do something, number one, that's going to be efficient and cool, and number two, will help show off a couple mods that we haven't had the opportunity to look at yet. And you know me, when I get to show off a cool mod, I get excited, and that's what we're doing today. So, uh, without further ado, let's start planning for where this kelp farm is going to be. Now, I don't need it to be particularly huge. Um, I'm thinking somewhere back here, so we can tie into this giant windmill's power. Um, what my, my rough plan is probably to have... Probably... I'm going to bring this guy's range down. If I bring his range down to the appropriate amount, then I can mine in a good way and not accidentally mine further than I want to. How's that sound? Not too bad. Not too bad. I like that. And where's my Horn of the Wild? Let's clear that stuff out too. So my plan is to have like probably a, roughly speaking, three by five or five by five area um, wherein I can, you know, do all the things such as plant, grow, and harvest kelp. So does a five by five sound like a nice little kind of starting point? I don't see why not. Um, so let's do that with a little bit of a building gadget here. And, you know, what we're gonna have to do is make sure we have a nice kind of flattish area. So I'm gonna do a little bit of terraforming. that sound like a good plan? Yeah, buddy. Maybe not that one. I just kind of want, you know, a roughly flat terrain here. And look, I still have a, I still have a, a bit of a mess, but that's okay. We'll just get rid of this guy. We don't need that crafting table no more, right? So this roughly is where my kelp farm is going to be. And like I said, I've got a couple cool things I get to show off today, which makes me just ever so excited. So let me let me terraform this spot a little bit more, and we'll be right back once we're ready to show off some neat stuff. All right, so let's go with our five by five kind of plan. Okay, so that's gonna be, and I might I might go seven by seven now that I'm looking at it because I'm like, oh, that ain't so big, right? We could we could fit seven by seven, couldn't we? I feel like the answer is yes. Does this feel like a pretty good kelp farm? Yeah, that looks cool. We could always make it bigger. There's nothing that says we can't. All right, neato burrito. Uh, so now tell me something. Um, if I were to get a water spell, that's right, I made you touch, didn't I? Man, play some water is expensive. Come on, ours, it's just water. It's just water. Cut me a little bit of a break. Now here's what I'm hoping is a cool trick. We'll find out if I'm right about this. Right? Uh, yeah, we don't want ray trace fluid on, right? Shouldn't you guys do all the, you know, No more flowing bit. There you go, right? How's that? Is that cool? I mean, it seems cool. Uh, 
Now we're obviously going to need lots more kelp if we want that to happen, but obviously we'll also be growing more kelp, so it should be fine. In theory. Sleep through this long night. Yeah, see, we're already we're already growing kelp here. Look at that. Look at that. Before you know it, we'll have more than enough kelp. Should be cool. All right. Nice. So let's plan for what we want to do. So we're going to want a harvester. We're going to want a mechanical harvester. And we're going to want to use pistons. And basically what I'm going to do, instead of a rotational orientation like this, I'm going to go with a sticky mechanical piston. And if we check out how this thing works, it's pretty cool. Basically, it'll push blocks in front of it forward. And we can build contraptions with pistons in the same way that we've built contraptions with the rotational dude back there. Um, so, you know, forward, backward, and all that good stuff. Um, you can do the whole, the whole thing, right? Everything that we saw already. Um, so we can push, you know, contraptions. What I'm going to do is I'm basically going to push um, a harvester, right? And we'll have it harvest the stuffs, right? And that should be cool. Instead of pushing glass, though, it's going to be just harvesters. Let's give it a shot. So I'm going to need seven harvesters. Uh, and a few other components. So let me get crafting and we'll be right back. So we're going to need some piston extension poles. Uh, I'm just pull, putting that out there because they, if you saw on the thing there, piston extension poles go behind the piston and that's how far the piston can move forward. It won't be able to move any further if, you know, it doesn't have, so if you put no poles, it can't move at all. So trust me, important part. And another component we're going to want is a sequential gear shift because this is actually really useful with pistons specifically. What it does is you can control using a timer basically inside the sequential gear shift so that it does something and then does the opposite. Cool? So when it receives a redstone signal, it'll do the thing and then it'll do the opposite. Or you can control it a bunch of different ways. So let's set up a sequential gear shift because it's a little tricky to explain and then hopefully you guys will get the, the gist of it. Cool? Okay, so I think I've got most of the things I need. I guess we'll find out. So I'm going to pop down here and um, the gist is, is that we want probably, let's plan for, well, yeah, I think we'll be fine. So what we want is our mechanical harvesters to be here, all right? And it might be a little bit easier if I got my shovel out. Okay. And... That's cool. Awesome. And then behind that, we're going to want probably a line of linear chassis. Now, I'm not entirely sure, but I suspect I can do this in the opposite way. So that if I place, I might actually want my laser to do this. Yeah, not that though. Perfect. Okay, now you back in the offhand. So remember, all the linear chassis will connect to each other, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Um, and then we're going to want a chest. Remember five seconds ago when I voided a crafting table? Aren't you glad I did that? And the chest can sit here. I might move that elsewhere. We'll see. Maybe I want the chest on the other side. I don't know. Thematically, I feel like it should go on the other side. And I don't have a reason for that. I just... It's just how I feel. It's just how I feel. Okay. So, from here... Let's put you away. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Then we're gonna want, and now that I'm, I don't think we need the sticky bit for our piston, but we'll find out. And technically you can fit in the middle here. I feel like middle is a better thematic position for that. Okay, and then remember I said we want extension poles. So each block is how far it can push. So I think we want one, and just like the other things, two, three, four.
five, six, seven. Okay, cool. Now we're gonna want our sequenced gear shift here. Now he's gonna relay rotational force and we're gonna want some shafts. And my thoughts are, did I line this up like almost perfect? Actually, yeah, pretty perfect, not gonna lie. A little excited about that. So let's put you in one by one mode. So if I made you a, let's bring this down here. If I made you a vertical gearbox and then ran some shafts straight down to another vertical gearbox, and then ran some shafts to here with a regular gearbox. Hey, 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 all right, now we're, now we got something happening. All right, now the sequence gear shift, we're gonna configure it so that you're supposed to have a piston that's gonna be moved seven meters, uh, I'm gonna say double speed forward, then wait, no, time to delay, 10 ticks, so half a second, and then piston will move backwards at double speed. Now, forwards and backwards is relational to how the rotation happens to be occurring. So it's very possible that backwards is going forward and forward is going backwards. It's, we're gonna have to figure it out, right? Depending on this rotation. And we could reverse that by throwing another gearbox in here, or we should just configure it to go backwards and then forwards, it doesn't super matter. Um, but at this point, we can test this with a button press. So right now, in theory, this might do something. And it did not. It might go forward now, though. Hey, there we go. Okay, cool. See? So that, that, that situation I just described is exactly what happened. So I want you to do this and then this. So now he's going to go forwards and then backwards. Got it? Cool. Now, I don't want you to stop when you get up there because look what happened. Um, he killed my poor water. That's a shame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna configure him to not place the piston, or not place the blocks until he's back at his home position. So what's happening right now is this guy's configured, the default configuration is always place when stopped. So what happens is he goes forward, he stops for a second and we turn back into normal blocks. Well, half a second technically. Um, and then he goes backwards. If I configure him to instead place only in starting position, that means he will only turn back into blocks when he gets back to his starting position. So what that means, stop and see how he didn't destroy the water? Because he didn't turn back into uh, blocks until he got back here. Cool? How cool is that? I think it's cool. I challenge you to say otherwise. Challenge. Now if we position everything correctly, Hey, 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 look at that. Woo, this is fun. And we're harvesting the kelp as we go. Man, how neat is that? And look at all the kelp we've got already. It's beautiful, beautiful, I tell you. Isn't it amazing that I actually got exactly 21 kelp, which is exactly how much we need to fill this area out. How? How wild is that? I mean, I'm just saying, that is cool. All right, so step one complete. We've now got this set up such that when we give this block a redstone signal, he will harvest the kelp. And then when he comes back, he turns into a solid entity of blocks again, right? A solid group of blocks, which means I can throw a laser IO node here and be good to go. In theory, in theory. So what if we had, you ready for this? 
a little bit of this and a little bit of this and you did that set to extract mode and you did this set to insert mode and we pop home and make ourselves a quick functional storage drawer Look at that, we've already got seven kelp stored. Okay, now watch what happens when I push the button. He disconnects from the node, he moves forward, he harvests kelp, he comes back, and then the node reconnects to him because he's a block again and extracts the kelp. And now we've got 11 kelp. Oh, that is cool. And we ain't even done with the cool stuff yet. We're just about to get to the cool part because I'm gonna try out a little bit of Super Circuit Maker. If you're not familiar with Super Circuit Maker, welcome to modded Minecraft. Because, well, I mean, it was around for a bit and then it wasn't around for a bit and now it's back. Uh, so Super Circuit Maker is for the redstone enthusiasts in us all. It is for those who love doing super complex redstone contraptions in a itty bitty living space. So let's take a look at today, a little bit of Super Circuit Maker. And trust me, trust me, we'll be doing a lot more Super Circuit Maker as the series goes on. Cool? And you come up here with me again because I need you to live in a position that makes more logical sense. Um, you guys can all go into your dude. That seems fine. Technically, this shouldn't really be in here because andesite casings, but meh, we'll be fine. Uh, let me clean up the rest of my inventory and then we'll get into Super Circuit Maker. All right, so the biggest part of Super Circuit Maker is tiny piles of redstone. So I'm going to get, I don't know, a stack of them? Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Look at that. Can I turn it back into regular redstone? I can. That's even better. That's even better. Now, the other thing we're going to need uh, are some circuits, uh, which are made like this. Sweet. It's probably more circuits than we need, but it's probably more than I'll ever need, so I'll take it. Uh, I maybe, sh well, do, I, do these guys need circuits? No, actually, we're cool. Yeah, nah, we're fine. Um, so we definitely want to make some of those. So we've got circuits, we've got redstone. Uh, the other thing we're going to need, I, I wouldn't mind a quartz resonator. And it looks like we're going to need some deep slate, which I think I've got some of. How do I make regular deep slate? Is it straight up just deep slate is that I can make? Uh, I can just smell cobbled? Okay. I had a feeling that was it, but you never know. So let's make each of these components so we can kind of check them out. Uh, so I know we're going to need an eye of ender because I definitely know that I'm going to need one of that. That's, that's a need. That's not a want. All right. So here's what we want to make. I'm just going to make one of each and we can play with them all a little bit. Cool. So glowstone exciter. Um, I want to say this does something with random pulses. So this is like a randomizer. Uh, quartz resonator. So quartz resonator is like a um, repeater where you can delay things. But unlike a repeater, it doesn't strengthen the signal. So like you can have like a delay where it's like, hey, when this gets a signal, wait 10 ticks and then emit the same signal on the other side. Um, there's the ender pulsar, which is exactly what we want. And I could have sworn... Oh, how did that get in there? My, my, my bad. My bad. You guys go in there. I forgot. You're not, you're not going to sort things that you don't deserve. So, uh, ender pulsar is exactly what we're going to use. It's a timer. So that's going to be key. Um, and then we can also make ourselves... You know, we're going to make a bunch of these. Uh, some redstone torches. They're going to be useful. And I'll get a little bit more redstone dust. And is that all I really need right now? I wouldn't mind a booper. I mean, it's it's called a booper. Why wouldn't you make one of these, right? I mean, I just feel like that's the thing to do. I feel like that's what you do. You make a, if there's a block called a booper, you make it. Uh, miniature lamp and miniature button are just miniature versions of them of themselves. So they'll like emit light or something i might want to do this just for fun like i'm just i want to play with all the components of super circuit maker right like that's just that's just what i want to do so i think you guys will forgive me for wanting to do that right i assume 
I don't think we need the miniature lamp, though. Or the button, though. This guy we don't need. I don't think. We'll find out. Probably. To create land we go. Um, now, I'm guessing there's no monocle yet. Remember that? I let you, like, zoom in on stuff. Though I bet if I got a spyglass, that would be a way to do it. But, so here's, here's what this guy does, right? Super Circuit Maker. Real quick tutorial. Boop. So, miniature piles of redstone dust can go in here. And basically, you can build circuits. Oh, you know what I forgot to make? Boop, boop. I think that's me. Pretty sure that's me. I forgot to make my screwdriver. That was also what to do. I'm going to need a piece of lapis. Because every tool, or every mod needs a wrench. Including mine. All right. So, I think we can do this to make it accept. And this to emit. So if I'm not mistaken, that will basically just be a redstone wire. So if I give you a redstone signal with a lever, for example, might as well have a couple levers on hand, I think you will relay the signal through the block. Cool? So what this does is um, when it's this, it's not connecting to the outside. When it's this, it's sending to the outside, which is what this is, right? So like if I did this, he's not connected. This sends to the outside, this receives from the outside. So because he's not connected, he's not sending to the outside, but now he is. Cool? And you can make, you know, whatever circuitry you want. So if you wanted, you know, something coming out here, and it doesn't have to be in the exact middle, it can really kind of be anywhere. And you can left click with your screwdriver or I assume anything. Cool, right? How cool is that? It's the neatest. It's the neatest of things. Um, so now there's a bunch of different little components you can add into here, right? So uh, the quartz resonator, for example, we talked a little bit about that. Um, so what that'll do, let's turn you off for a sec. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, so if we right click the quartz resonator, we can see what the delay is set to. So if I set it to a five second delay, watch what happens when I do this. Five seconds, go. Oh, you know what? I need to set this guy to out. Yeah, that's what I need to do there, right? And then there's a five second delay before he decides to, you know, turn off. So turn on, five second delay, turn off. So it's important to set that connector to say, hey, you you receive. Because, because this guy is really cool in that he can do like nifty stuff, right? So check this out, right? What if I did this? I think, maybe, I don't know. Hey, yeah, no, it does. <laughs> I just made like a little, a little, a little timer there, didn't I? Didn't I? Didn't I just make a little timer there? How cool is that? I don't even need this no more. <laughs> cool, right? All right, so with this done now, goodbye. Uh, he'll stop pulsing in theory. But if we want to do this in a little better of a way, we could use the Ender Pulsar. And what we could do is connect this. Now the Ender Pulsar will pulse every so often, right? So what we might want to do, we're going to see if that pulse is, is too short to satisfy, you know, Mr. Grumpy over there, but we'll see. Now, I'm not mistaken if I have, and I break this. Well, that's interesting. Am I missing something on how you're supposed to break this thing? Maybe you're supposed to break it with this? Oh, hello. Oh, are you supposed to hold shift to break it? Yeah, maybe that's like an on purpose. I don't know. So let's see what happened there. Do, 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 do. And then hold shift. Yeah, you're supposed to hold shift to break it. Okay, look, it gives you your redstone back. So when you break it, all the components that are on it pop off. There might be, a, I remember there used to be like templates and stuff, and there might be a way. Now, there's way more you can do with this, by the way. There's a whole like palette system where you can have different colored wires on there. Uh, I'm not going to get into that just yet. And then there's also uh, vertical sticks and support platforms. You can have vertical redstone and do some really complex stuff that's outside of my realm of expertise. 
Um, absolutely outside my realm of expertise. So let's start with this guy, right? So basically what I'm gonna start with is if I have an ender pulsar here, and then we put some tiny piles of redstone dust here. Now I'm gonna make you run every 10 seconds. Now that's probably too fast. Let's make it 20. There you go. And then what we need to see is, will this guy... So sometimes things want a redstone signal that's not so quick. So if we need to slow it down, we can. Okay? And we can do that with the quartz miniature, miniature dude here. Oh, hello. Nope, it worked. How cool is that? Well, that's pretty, that's pretty spiffy. And then he'll stop. He'll collect his kelp. And then, boop, he goes again. Hey, that timing was actually pretty perfect. Not bad. Now, here's a question. If the ender pulsar receives a redstone signal, will it stop pulsing? Right? So we'll be able to test this by putting a, a stopper here. Now, technically, you probably don't need these redstone dusts. Technically, you can probably put this directly next to the sequence gear shift, and we'll test that in a moment. But my first test is, does giving the ender pulse a redstone signal prevent it from running? I'm going to assume yes. And I'm also going to assume that it resets its timer back to zero. So it should have run by now, and because it hasn't, I'm going to assume this to be working. And if I turn it off, it probably should have run by now because remember how quickly after it got back it went so it takes close to 20 seconds for it to go forward and back and then it's you know within a few seconds it's moving again so i think we have an answer to both our questions the ender pulsar's timer stops and then resets itself once it receives a redstone signal cool so next thing we're going to do is we're going to move the super circuit maker thing forward and that should be cool so first off, let's do this, and then we can do this, and then let's try building that again. Now, you can also totally put, like, torches on here for, like, knot gates and whatnot, and there's a lot you can do, right? I've barely scratched the surface of what you can do with Super Circuit Maker. There we go. So you're going to be at 20 seconds again. Cool. And then we can put our lever down. And now you shouldn't be running. There should be no running. Cool. Even if we set you to five seconds, we'll validate that he just ain't going to run. Cool. And if we turn the lever off in 20 seconds, He's going to push forward, he's going to do his thing, and everybody's happy. Cool? Uh, now, we didn't look at the Glowstone Exciter. That's like a random pulser. And then the Booper. Let's see what the Booper does. Because I like the sounds of the Booper. Oh, that's neat. So right-clicking it emits a sound. Clicking it with the wrench changes the noise that it makes. That's neat. I like that. And then wasn't there a lamp? Yeah, I hear it. That was cool. Hey, there's a miniature lamp. Let's see. It should light up. Haha, <laughs> cool. I like it. Yeah, we obviously don't need the miniature lamp, but that's useful if you're like doing stuff, right? And you can do neat things with it. All right, I like it. That's an automated kelp farm with Create and Super Circuit Maker. Barely using the feature set of Super Circuit Maker, but I still used it, so it counts. So that's what I'm gonna call kelp for days. Cause I mean, we've now got literally infinite kelp. And what I should probably do, what I should probably do, so I'm gonna put away you. Um, 
in here has kind of become my miscellaneous fun mod toys chest, and that's what I'm going to do for the time being. For the time being, at least until we get to the point where we have, like, refined storage or applied energistics. Um, which I honestly don't know. And I never made my crushing wheel, because we never got to it. I was having too much fun with Super Circuit Maker. You can't blame me. It's not my fault. Super Circuit Maker is such a fun mod. Um... So we've got the kelp farm automated now, which is cool, right? And then we can maybe set up the crushing wheel next episode. We'll see. Because uh, we're pretty we're pretty wrapping up point at this point, I think. But, uh, yeah, no, I think that's, that's super neat. And, uh, you know, I, I remember now. I came back here for a void upgrade. Where did I put that void upgrade? Is it here? Yeah, that's it. Let's stick a void upgrade in that kelp, dude. So that way any excess kelp will just be voided, right? So kelp gets harvested. Kelp goes into drawer. Kelp gets voided if there's too much, right? So we're at currently 84. It's going to land. It's going to place. And then we should be at a higher number if it harvested any of that round. Right? Boom. <laughs> it's so cool. I love it. I like the little sound, too. It just goes boom. I'm I'm harvesting kelp for you, dire wolf. All right. So wrapping up point for the episode. Dire wolf 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll come back next time. And, uh, you know, have more fun playing with Darwell 20 back. All right, everyone, take it easy.